Hey friends, how many nights have you found yourself standing in the kitchen wondering what you're going to do with that pound of ground beef? I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen and I've got some answers for you. I'm sharing three amazing ground beef dishes you'll want to make again and again. They're all quick and easy, made with inexpensive, simple ingredients your family will actually eat. So sit back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Tonight we're making a cornbread taco bake. I'm gonna start with this little envelope of Mexican style cornbread. This is not spicy at all, but feel free to use whatever cornbread mix you like. And I'm preparing it a little bit different than what's on the back of the package. I'm using a half a cup of milk, which is a little less, one egg, and the instructions on this recipe say to bake it at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. That's a little lower temperature and a little less time than what the back of that package says. But I'm gonna trust the recipe writer here. The recipe said to bake this in a nine by nine pan, which I did not have. So I did a little bit of math, you know, nine times nine is 81. So I had this little pan and I measured the bottom of it and it was 10 by 7 so that's 70 we're just gonna go with this and see how it turns out put it in 350 for 15 minutes while my cornbread's baking up I've got a pound of ground beef I'm browning up here I'm also going to take a 15 ounce can of corn the recipe calls for a little less about 11 ounces but I don't know if they make an 11 ounce can of corn I'm also gonna take a can of Rotel. This is just diced tomatoes with green chilies. We're gonna open these up and drain them off. And I always get comments on this little doohickey when I pull it out, mainly when I'm doing tuna patties. You can open a can of tuna and squish this down in here. You would just squish it and drain it. And you can get stuff so dry. I also use this when I'm like uh, thawing out spinach and I'll push it down in there real hard because nothing gets through, but it really drains it well. But the awesome thing about it, when you need to drain vegetables, you can just turn it upside down and it drains them off perfect. These are the handiest little things. It looks like the ground beef is almost cooked through. So I'm just gonna use the old paper towel blotting trick and get up most of this excess grease in here. Ground beef is looking good, so I'm gonna take about a third a cup of water and about three tablespoons of taco seasoning, which is probably this whole packet, if I'm remembering correct. If I'm not, it'll be fine. It won't hurt one little thing. Now we're gonna add in that can of Rotel and this can of whole kernel sweet corn. I'm gonna save just a little bit out. I'll put that in the fridge and probably put it in the salad. And we're just gonna get all of this combined together. Let it simmer for just a minute till everything kinda gets all feeling like friends in there. I almost forgot this recipe calls for a half a cup of green onions. I had two pretty good sized ones, so the more the better. And if I have extra, I will definitely just put it on the top. Now we're gonna make a cheese and sour cream mixture. I'm starting with 16 ounces. That's two cups of sour cream. You wanna use one cup of cheese. I'm gonna use maybe half a cup of Monterey Jack. That one just came out of the freezer. It looks a little odd. And I'm also gonna use about half a cup of cheddar because I want like a Mexican blend. I'm gonna put in half a cup of those green onions and I'm just gonna put it all. And we'll get this mixed together. Okay, got my cornbread out, and it may be done all the way through. It's not as brown as what I normally have, but it's okay if it's not done because it's going to cook a little bit longer. We're going to take our taco meat mixture that we had the corn and the rotel in. We're going to spread this right across of this cornbread. Now we're going to take this sour cream and the cheese and onion mixture, and real carefully, we're just going to spread it out right over top of our meat. It's a lot of good stuff in here. This is gonna be really hearty. Now we're gonna use that second cup of cheese. And again, I'm mixing some cheddar and a little Monterey Jack, but just use whatever you have. It will be fine, I'm sure. 
and we're going to put this back in that 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. I did cook mine an additional five minutes and then I broiled it for just a couple. Everything down in here was already done. You're just trying to get all your cheese and stuff melted down. And I do like mine a little bit more brown across the top. So we're gonna let it set about five or 10 minutes and we'll cut into it. I almost forgot my taco sauce. Definitely want a little bit of that on top. Now, let's put some more lettuce on it. A little bit of red onion and some tomato. Not only is this a beautiful and impressive looking little easy casserole, it is so, so delicious. It's got all of the wonderful flavors. What's not to love about cornbread and tacos? Together forever. They make the perfect BFFs. This is a good one for summer, but you know what? I get a little bit of that cozy fall vibe going on here too with this cornbread. Try this one and let me know what you think. I love it. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about today's sponsor, and it's one of my favorites. It's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. At our house, we have already fully engaged in summer mode. That means longer days full of fun. And to keep on my schedule, I menu plan way far in advance. Most of our meals are centered around the things that I'm filming to share with you here. But I have one week every month. I call it my catch-up week. And that week, I give myself a break and let HelloFresh take care of all the details. I can just enjoy the summer fun knowing that HelloFresh has delivered everything I need to make a delicious meal right to my door. And the recipes from HelloFresh are so delicious and each one has foolproof, easy to follow instructions with photos each step along the way. Plus the pre-portioned ingredients make it easy to get cooking quickly and you don't waste anything. With HelloFresh, you receive top quality ingredients. The seasonal produce is picked at peak ripeness and delivered from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days. And I am really loving the fast and fresh menu options. Can you believe this beautiful steak and potatoes went from box to plate in less than 15 minutes and it was only 560 calories. To get started, go to hellofresh.com and use code MAMA16 at checkout for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's an amazing offer you don't want to miss out on this summer. I'll have all the details in the description box below. Remember, go to hellofresh.com and use code MAMA16 at checkout for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Tonight we're making a very delicious, easy skillet lasagna. As always, we are using very basic pantry staple ingredients and our pound of ground beef. What I found, if you were here this fall when I discovered lasagna soup, I looked everywhere for these. Could not find them anywhere in my town, so I just had to break up lasagna noodles for my soup. And if you've not seen that video, I will link it below. It's delicious. But was at Trader Joe's and they had this. So I went ahead and grabbed it. This name. I knew that it meant little queen, but I did not understand why these are little queens. So the more you know, this was the name of a princess in Italy and this was named in honor of her. So there you go. And I believe this is pronounced Mafalda. I could be wrong on that. If you don't have this, be sure and use a penne. Just whatever you have would work fine. I did find it interesting that Chef Boyardee had no trouble for years getting his hands on these little noodles. Yet here in my town, I had to go to the big city of Knoxville to get mine. We're going to use two cups of these. We're just going to cook these till they're al dente. And friends, if I ever offend anyone by saying something from your culture the wrong way, please know I don't do it on purpose. I can't even speak my English language. <laughs> See right there. <laughs> I can't even speak my own English language right half the time. But you know what? I do love learning. I do love 
finding out what the names of things mean in different cultures and stuff like that. It's kind of like when you're studying the Bible and you go back to see what the Hebrew and um, Arabic meaning of words were. It's just interesting, and I'm always loving to learn things like that. But, um, yeah, I'm not the best pronouncer. Sorry. Meanwhile, over here in a language I speak fairly well, East Tennessee Appalachian, I'm dicing up one Vidalia onion, and Vidalia onions are named after a little town in Georgia called Vidalia, Georgia. That's where these were originally grown. Got some oil heated up in my skillet here, and I'm just going to soften me up this Vidalia onion. Should just take a couple of minutes. Now that our onions are good and soft, we're going to add in our pound of hamburger meat. Now we're going to add in some spices. We're going to use about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. We're going to use about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and two little teaspoons here of minced garlic. We want to get all this incorporated in and get our meat browned up. And I plan on leaving the grease in this dish tonight. This was an 85-15 ground beef, so it's not going to have as much fat in it as Chuck does. If you're using a fattier cut of ground beef, you would want to drain it off before you put all your seasonings in here so you don't lose any flavor. And you could definitely use the Italian sausage. You could add some riced cauliflower in here. That's not anything that we really like, so I don't know if you could replace the meat with it, but you could definitely add it in addition to, for sure. And I thought about throwing some spinach in here, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like it is today. I almost forgot a little salt and pepper. That goes a long way if anything you're making. Now we're going to add 15 ounces of tomato sauce. I buy the small 8 ounce cans, so I'm actually doing 16. And this is not my first dance with tomato sauce in a dish, so I'm putting in a big old spoonful of tomato paste. Anytime I've just used tomato sauce, it's never had a rich enough flavor for me. And tomato paste will really give it some deep, just robust flavor. At this point, we're going to take some grated Parmesan cheese and we're going to mix in about half a cup. And this next step is totally optional, but I'm also putting in about a cup of cottage cheese. You're welcome to use ricotta or just leave this out. But to me, a lasagna has to have the cottage or ricotta cheese. This is not gonna be as pretty as layering up a lasagna, but every bit of the flavor is gonna be in here. Once that comes back up to a little bit of a simmer, we're gonna add our pasta right in here. I should have used my bigger skillet. I do this every single time. And I did throw in another handful of this pasta when I was cooking it up because it didn't look like I had hardly used half of that bag. And that was a 16 ounce bag. Now I'm gonna take a generous cup of mozzarella cheese and sprinkle it all across the top of this. Anytime I top something with mozzarella, I always like to go back with a little Italian seasoning. I just think it makes it pretty. I'm cutting my heat down to low and I am just gonna cover this and let it melt that cheese down. Friends, this one is so, so good. It's a great, easy way to make lasagna without heating up the whole kitchen with all of the prep and then baking it off in the oven for so long. And I already had a salad fixed up for the week, so this made it even quicker. And cleanup was a breeze, literally. Just the plates we ate off of, a skillet, and a pot that I boiled the noodles in. It's so good. Perfect, perfect for summer lasagna dinner. It's beautiful and delicious. We're also going to have these garlic knots that I got at Aldi. I showed these in a recent grocery haul. A lot of you guys said they're great. Preheat your oven to 375. You put it face down on a baking sheet. Said to cut two or three slits 
in the back of your bag. Bake it for nine minutes, then remove it and let it set for just a few seconds. Cut it open, dump out your glorious little garlic knots. These were super delicious. Friends, tonight I'm doing something that I never thought I would do. I'm straying away from my tried and true faithful Mary's meatloaf. Let's see what we think about them. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 425 degrees. This recipe calls for two pounds of ground beef, but it is just me and Patrick, so I'm only using one pound. I'm putting in three ounces of chili sauce. That's just a little bit less than half a cup. Called for two slices of bacon crumbled up. I'm just gonna eyeball some of these real bacon pieces. Also putting in about three quarters cup of shredded cheese. I normally use oatmeal in my meatloaf. This is a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs. To season it, we're gonna use half a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm using half a teaspoon of garlic powder. It called for granulated garlic. And half a teaspoon of seasoning salt. We're gonna squirt in about half a teaspoon of some yellow mustard and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Cannot forget the egg. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> do not overmix your meatloaf. That makes it very tough. You just want to get it mixed together, then stop. And if you've seen me make meatloaf on my channel before, you know I don't actually form mine into a loaf. I spread it out in a casserole dish, and I think that helps me not to overcook it because that's another thing that will really ruin your meatloaf and make it tough is, you know, overcooking it. This is plenty moist enough, but if you were to get too much breadcrumbs, you can always just put a little bit of milk in here, put a little moisture back into it if you need to. I have divided my meat out into four pretty equal portions and I'm kind of loafing them, but kind of pattying them out a little bit too. I've done my best to get them the same size and then I'm just gonna push a little dent down in the middle of each one. Hopefully that will help it to not really like swell up so much when it's cooking. Then take your favorite barbecue sauce. We're using this Kinder's Mild and you're gonna put just a little bit over the top Then you're gonna brush it all across the top of your meatloaf. Now that we have them all coated, we're gonna put them in the 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes. This is for my new followers. Everybody always asks, how do you doctor up canned green beans? This is how I do it. Everybody has their ways. I rarely have Green Giant. I usually have Kroger brand, so don't think I'm brand loyal on my green beans. And I throw them in right in the water that they come in. I throw about a tablespoon of butter in there, some real bacon bits, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. If you have soy sauce and you like it, you could use that. I like black pepper and my green beans and a little salt. The kind of strange ingredient is some brown sugar. My husband was never a fan of green beans, especially out of a can, but he loves them like this. We were at a cookout at our neighbor's house and her mom had made a big old pan of green beans and he went wild for them. So this is how she made them. So now this is how I make them for him. A lot of people like to drain this water off out of the can and put plain tap water in there or chicken broth and that is fine too. And I've got mine cut up pretty high and I'll let them come up to a nice bowl and cut them down to simmer and I'll let mine cook pretty hard. I like most of the liquid gone out of mine. Also had just a few of these little golden buttery potatoes left so I just threw them in some water and I'm gonna boil them up. Got my potatoes kind of fork tender and I did not even peel them or anything. I was just pretty lazy tonight. But I am old school. I like my hand potato masher. Gonna start with just a little bit of milk. Oh, I forgot I had some heavy whipping cream open. That would have been good to put in here. That's two tablespoons of butter. It's probably too much for this, <laughs> but it was the end of a stick. Let me hit this with a little salt and some pepper. Let's see what we got here. That's a perfect amount for me and Patrick. 
and sometimes I'll put mayonnaise in my mashed potatoes. Sometimes I put cream cheese. And that was out of this little container. If I can find a picture of it, I'll throw it up on the screen for you. It was also in my Aldi haul. And it was like a cream cheese spread with peppercorn and Parmesan. I also like my potatoes, like I said, with the skin on. And I like them just a little bit lumpy. This is so delicious. This was so comforting. This is definitely not the right time of year to be eating this kind of food, but the heart wants what the heart wants. When it wanted meatloaf, we had to make it with mashed potatoes and green beans. I never thought that anything could come close to Mary's meatloaf. I really, really like this almost as much as Mary's meatloaf, but Patrick he likes this even better. So now we're going to have a meatloaf standoff around here. And you know what, friends? There's not one onion in this meatloaf. It wasn't in the recipe, and I was just concentrating on it, and I didn't even realize it. It's really good, but um, all meatloaf has an onion and cheeseburgers too, but I sure didn't miss it. I hope this video has given you some helpful ideas that will solve your dinner time dilemmas. If you need some more ground beef recipes, be sure and check out the video I have linked on the screen for five more amazing ground beef dishes. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.